Morning all. I'd like to show you this morning a very interesting encounter between Magnus Carlsen and Vichy Anand, played in the Amber Rapid Tournament of 2008. In 2008, FIDE were not publishing uh, rapid ratings. That innovation actually was just this year. 1st of July, the lists of player profiles on the FIDE website started showing rapid FIDE ratings and blitz FIDE ratings. If you want to shop for such ratings, by the way, you might be interested in the London Classic coming up uh, next month. Each night there will be a five-minute tournament which will be FIDE rated. I think it's run by Adam Ralph. And each weekend on the Sunday, the uh, Saturday and Sunday, I think there will be rapid tournaments. So you could actually shop for three different types of FIDE rating if you play in the London Classic and its events. So it's very exciting now that these different skills uh, areas. I mean, they're virtually different genres, different games of chess, where you could, you know, create strategies which make you very good on, say, rapid or blitz, but they might not transfer to each other, as I personally, I think, I'm dis discovering. So, um, so here anyway, rapid skills are being demonstrated in the Amber Rapid. Um, I think it's Ustrom who organised these tournaments, as well as um, the Amber Blindfold, which is certainly not a uh, measured by FIDE yet, or for, as part of the FIDE rating card. But, um, okay, Magnus kicked off in this rapid game in 2008 with C4, the English opening. And Vichy replied E5. And we get G3, so White's trying to get more control over D5 with this system. It looks like a reverse Sicilian. C6, and now D4, interrupting black a little bit, storming the e5 pawn. It now goes to e4. And we have a kind of reversed French in a way, especially if black's allowed d5. But black is not allowed d5 because white plays d5. Conceding though some dark squares, which might be a problem, a little bit of controversy here. Knight f6, bishop g2. But the thing is, this pawn might be more vulnerable later. It's a bit more dislocated from black's other pawns. Check from Vichy, and now we see bishop d2, queen e7, and now we see knight c3, okay, black now castles. This knight is depriving white of a natural place for his knight. Maybe you might think he could consider this, but what about something like a g5 construction later to chase a knight on f4, or what about h4, knight h3, there are, there are plans uh, here, but what about just playing e3 and knight e2? There are ways to unravel. For the moment, though, Magnus just kicks the bishop on b4 to c5 and now chooses actually e3. So he's voluntarily shutting out his bishop, well, in the pawn structure. Can this be punished? d6 is played by Vichy, knight g e2. C takes d5, and now knight takes d5, encouraging an exchange of knights. Knight takes d5, C takes d5. Also, with knight d5, this c3 square is now available for another piece. Knight d7, white castles, knight f6, putting pressure on d5. Bishop c3, indirectly defending d5 now. Bishop g4. Okay. And this is where it gets very interesting with the use of forcing moves. Forcing moves which um, try and win potentially material. Bishop takes f6, potentially trying to win e4. If the queen takes e4 is a bit looser. But what about b2? So let's see this now. Vichy did play queen takes f6 and we saw now b4. So this pawn potentially is going to be loose at the end of this. Bishop b6. Can it be taken safely though? Well, it is taken. What's the punishment? For the moment, bishop e2, queen e2, the rook's still protected by the rook. There's no, there's no liability on a1. But the potential for that liability is, is increased with Vichy's next move, a5. Okay. So, does white want to concede dark squares? Doesn't seem that appetizing. Also, queen b2 would be annoying on b5 in any case. 
forking e2 and b5 potentially. So difficult position with black getting a lot of pressure it seems on the a file now if b5 is really unplayable but we'll check this out in the second pass. Mengler's plays b takes a5, rook takes a5 of course providing a sitting target on the a file backward pawn but we see a very interesting tactical sequence now. I wonder if you can spot what Magnus played. If I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, Magnus plays bishop takes h7 check. He spotted a nifty tactic. The king does take and now we see, can you guess here? Check, nifty tactic indeed. Exploiting that loose bishop, the slight weakness of the last move, was a5 was, was b6, and it's been pounced on with this tactic, that b6 square. So this has solved some of White's problems. Queen takes b6. Doesn't matter about the knight hanging, because now the rooks attacked. Okay, so that's protected as well as putting more pressure on a3, and it all goes with forks. This game. There's another fork here. Can you spot it if I give you 10 seconds starting from now? Okay, queen d4, double attacking f6 and g4. Okay, but she doesn't want to take that queen and maybe take on d5. It looks as though. Uh, White would have a comfortable game anyway. He could play like something like um, a rook move to c1 maybe. So he plays queen f3, which has a lot more promise just to make White. It is a rapid game after all. Okay. But in this position, um, it seems you might think. Uh, well, the threat is also, as well as bishop h3, the threat is immediately to take the knight as well. And you might think, well, what about knight f4? Would that do? The problem with knight f4 that there might be, in fact, the move g5. If the knight moves, then bishop h3 comes back as a major move. So this is a little bit tricky, this position. But there's a really elegant move. Also, d5 is loose. Magnus solves all the problems here, believe it or not, with this next move to do with d5, to do with h3, to do with g2. It's a magical move in its own right, a simple move. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay. Knight c3 protects d5, prepares to answer bishop h3 with queen e4, so the queen's protecting g2. So much for the light square weaknesses around White's king here and the d5 potential weakness. So White has retained very cheekily it seems uh, a healthy pawn up right now or is it more? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, two pawns up right now in fact. So black plays rook e8 and now another tactical move, making full use of the power of double attacks in chess. Can you spot this next move if I give you 10 seconds starting from now? Okay, Magnus plays h3. So if bishop takes h3, it seems queen h4 check would be nice. Although maybe queen h5, it's not really what black wants to play. Queen h5, you know, then doubling pawns. White's already a pawn up. He can afford to wreck black structure a bit and use the c file, the b file there. So Vichy plays bishop f5. And now we see a, a slight weakness of the last move of that is that uh, f6 is no longer protected. That's pounced into, pinning basically the bishop now. Unless Vichy wants a queen exchange. King g8. And now rook a b1, just targeting that b7, and f7 will be under fire pretty soon after. But a very aggressive tactical response from Vichy here. Rook takes e3. 
Now, if it takes, then queen takes g3 looks very, very promising for at least a draw by perpetual or more. It's just ignored though. Rook takes b7, threatening uh, to make black. Now f7 needs to be protected. It's protected with bishop c8, as the queen is also protected by the rook at the moment. Magnus now plays a check on d8, and now takes on c8, not minding rook takes c3, and it looks as though black's about to get more material back with this a3 now dropping as well. Now, amazingly, uh, there's another amazing resource here that Magnus plays. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you 10 seconds here. Um, starting from now, it kind of leads to a double attack. Again, another full king technique is, is the prelude. This is the prelude move. So 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, rook takes f7 check. Well, it's clear that queen takes f7, there's queen takes c3 check, and actually wins the rook on a5 as well. So that's not possible. So Vichy plays king takes, is the only move it seems. Check. And now it's apparent that this rook's still a vulnerability here. King f6, king, queen d8 check, full king. <laughs> and, and, White's still going to be ahead a little bit. Let's have a look now. Queen takes a5. Remarkable double attack so far in the game. And the material now is White's now three pawns up. About to lose a3 though, so two pawns up. Now he plays queen b4, holding on to the rook, so d5 is not on priest. So king e5 is played. Queen d2, most of the problems are now resolved. Rook d3, check. Queen f5, check. Okay, and now getting the queens off here, White's got dangerous h pawn runner here. King g2, which provides rook h1 if needed as a resource as well. Rook a3, h4, the h pawn is starting to be pushed. h6, and now the king steps out at leisure to try and help or attack f5. The h pawn is protected. Check. Trying to drive the king in front of the d pawn to gain a little bit more time. And now the king goes to f4. King g5, the king is ready to herd the pawn now. And now rook d6 offering a trade of f2 for d5, which would be in White's favour. This, this pawn's winning. In any case, now. So here, Vichy resigned. And this represents, I think, the first um, game on any time control that Magnus beat Vichy and End. So the Rapid is to be taken more seriously for those after FIDO ratings nowadays. As of July this year, you know, it's part of all the FIDO rating cards. But um, Vichy Anand was known as a, an exceptionally fast grandmaster, um, playing moves very, very quickly in, early in his career. And this, this rapid time control was one of his uh, niche uh, areas of chess. Um, and so it was quite an achievement for Magnus to be able to beat Vichy in this time control. But the tactics, I think, are quite stunning, considering the time control especially. Let's do a second pass, uh, checking what the engine thought of this, this rapid game. So, okay, so we have the English opening with a slight difference. D5 is not minded by the engine here. So Magnus is not keen to play like a reverse French defence position with Fianchetto. He doesn't mind that uh, D5 being slightly loose. So White's okay here. Both sides are okay. Knight takes D5 is to be preferred. Okay. So about equal so far. We saw bishop c3. And then we saw this forcing move, bishop f6, which I'm not entirely sure the engine likes, actually. It's not mentioned it. Okay, maybe it dropped the advantage a tiny bit. I maybe need to give this more time, but it's a little, it feels a little bit forcing. So let's see what happened. So b4 to protect b2 and attack the bishop. Now taking that e4 pawn, 
Now, is it possible there was something much simpler than a5, which seemed to lead to a vulnerability on b6? So rook f e8, for example, and then queen b2. Black would have pressure here with the rooks and the bishops. Uh, but is it enough for a pawn? Not entirely sure. But um, engine has it about equal. So let's go back anyway. We saw a5. And this promises white an advantage technically. The engine sees all these tactics, I believe, and probably sees rook takes a5 as a bit of a blunder, preferring bishop c5. So in principle, um, the b6 bishop is loose. It's finding resources to exploit that theoretical like weakness possibility. You know, the Achilles heel of the uh, Death Star in Star Wars, the, the way James Bond escapes. In principle, there's a way, but is there a resource to actually exploit the, the kind of weakness of the setup here? Well, the engine will probably pounce on that in um, in a millionth of a second with bishop takes h7, exploiting that slight weakness in that position. And white is now over a half a pawn ahead after this. Okay, so rook f a8, still looking like loads of pressure for black. The preferred move here from an engine point of view is knight d4 it seems at the moment instead of queen d4 just offering a3 so here queen b4 is another double attack of sorts well but I don't know that doesn't look too convincing so the way Magnus played it is is more ambitious goals really to get the queens off potentially this looks dangerous. Knight c3, good, very good move. Better than knight f4. This knight f4 g5 is that actually possible? Is h3 here or knight g2? Apparently, even knight g2 is is not a problem. It seems if bishop h3, there's knight h4 in this position. <laughs> Using uh, the check possibility, that's amazing. So there's also well, there's other moves anyway. So but Magnus played. Knight c3, which is one of the better moves, keeping white's advantage. Very good. h3 now for this tactic. If it takes, that's not so hot for black. Having to force queen h5 out would damage black's pawn structure a bit, and that b7 is a liability. So, okay. So white's in the driving seat now. Queen f6, very strong move. Maybe bishop f5, slight inaccuracy. Maybe bishop c8 to be preferred, keeping eye on f6. So now this, this looks as though white's got a very definite advantage after queen f6, after this slight inaccuracy, bishop f5. Black not wanting to treat bishop all the way back. So king g8, and now the rook is coordinating with the queen potentially. Rook takes e3, it's just ignored with rook takes b7. Bishop c8, is that virtually the only move? It seems there's not too many ways to defend f7. Okay, and white is ending up with a huge, huge advantage here. Check. Queen takes c8. Did Magnus miss something here in playing rook takes f7? It seems the engine is crying out in this position for queen d8, still using the loose rook on a5, but much stronger than rook f7. On queen d8, what would black play? Why is the engine giving up the rook here with rook a8? Let's just play a move like taking on a3. Rook b8 threatens queen h8 mate. What can the king do? If king h8, then there's check. And that's dangerous. If king g7, queen h8, if queen h5, then queen f6, and now there's a threat of rook h8. So it seems Magnus might have missed a killer blow here for queen d8, getting onto the dark squares quite viciously, getting access to h4, okay, and as well as h8. So that seems crushing. If queen f6 here, then just taking the rook, of course. So it's with tempo getting onto the dark squares around black's king, basically. Queen d8, nifty move. But uh, okay, so rook takes f7. 
still promises white clear advantage. This is the correct continuation, yes, to win to win that rook. Actually, the engine prefers rook e1 here, believe it or not. Calmly just staying a rook down to play rook e1. But anyway, queen takes a5. This is much better for white now. So queen d2, it seems... Okay, there's there's other ways of winning this position, but it is very nice for white. You can just win this ending without too much hassle, which he does. He doesn't need a huge technical advantage, just needs an easy plan really. And the easy plan is, is that H pawn, just push the H pawn to increase the advantage. Okay, so a great game uh, from Magnus, tactically. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it and got something from it. I thought it was a fascinating encounter for the rapid time control. And if you want to shop for FIDE uh, rapid or blitz ratings as well as long game ratings, um, there's tournaments now like London Classic coming up uh, next month in London. Okay, um, so hope you enjoyed that. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.